No sé qué hacer. ¿Qué piensas? Today, we're going to talk about saber, the verb saber in Spanish, which is no. But we're going to talk very specifically about yo no sé y ella no sabe. We're going to talk about two forms of it. I would love to just be able to give a lesson about Spanish verbs and be done with it, but every verb is such a long story because there's 144 forms or whatever. I can't just do it like in English where I'm like, work, worked, works, working, and we're done. Um, so when I am teaching Spanish, I got to go little by little with every verb. Today, the verb saber, we're going to talk about how to say I don't know and a third person doesn't know. That's a couple of forms. That'll be fine. By the way, I'm Daniel. Welcome back to my sofa here in beautiful Barcelona. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel. I will be putting out more Spanish learning videos soon. You can also check out my podcast, Spain to Go, which has everything you ever wanted to know about life in Spain. So, no sé qué hacer is I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. We use no sé is the form of the verb. And then the qué hacer is the what to do part. Hacer is the verb do. And qué is what. Um, take a look at where the uh, written accents are on these words. That's sort of important in Spanish. Not everybody knows. And if you're like writing text messages, a lot of people will just skip the accents. But it's you know important if you're going to be correct. So, the form se is to know. It's I know, no se. It's got the accent over the E. And it's an irregular form of saber. I know that you might have learned some verbs, you know, in the first person that just end in O, so you're thinking like sabo or something. It's not sabo, it's never been that. Uh, my Spanish teachers back in the day in high school were very clear. We should not make the mistake of conjugating it like other verbs. It's no sé. No sé. So, we're going to talk about several examples of no sé, and then we're going to talk about the third person singular form also. Just to make this a little bit more interesting, I've also got words like how, who, when, why, etc. in these sentences, the Spanish versions, of course. No sé cómo se llama el novio de María. I don't know what María's boyfriend's name is. It's a little bit more complicated in English than it is in Spanish. No sé cómo se llama el novio de María. That's, uh, that's not too bad. Uh, cómo se llama, that's for him. The question, cómo te llamas, you probably learned in your first Spanish class. What's your name? No sé cómo se llama el novio de María. I don't know what María's boyfriend's name is. No sé dónde están tus gafas. I don't know where your glasses are. No sé dónde están tus gafas. So, dónde están mis gafas would be the question. No sé dónde están tus gafas is the, you know, the statement of lack of knowledge. No sé por qué está enfadada. En este caso, in this case, we're talking about a female person. No sé por qué está enfadada. I don't know why she is angry. The A on the end of enfadada is what tells us that. I did a video a while ago about adjectives with gender and number. If we wanted to talk about multiple people, we could say no sé por qué están enfadados. That could be a mixed group of people, both male and female. No sé cuál es su casa. Imagine we're like walking down the street looking for somebody's house and I say, no sé cuál es su casa. I don't know who's, I don't know which is his house. I don't know which is her house. In Spanish, this su is ambiguous. It could be his or her. No sé cuál es su casa. Cuál is which. So if you're keeping track here, qué is what, cómo is technically how, we're going to talk a little bit more about that later. Donde is where, por qué is why, and cuál is which. No sé cuál es su casa. 
Next we have, no sé quién está en la puerta. I don't know who is at the door. No sé quién está en la puerta. Can all of these um, who, what, where, when, why, how words have an accent on them also, a written accent. Quién. No sé quién está en la puerta. No sé cuándo empieza la reunión. I don't know when the meeting starts. No sé cuándo empieza la reunión. Ooh, the second time my, uh, my R sounded a lot better on reunión. I've got a video about how to pronounce the R in Spanish also. It's one of my most popular videos. Actually, at the beginning of a word, a single R is a hard double R sound. La reunión. So, no sé cuándo empieza la reunión. I don't know when the meeting starts. I told you earlier that how is como, but when we're saying we don't know how to do something, we don't actually use the como. No sé hablar chino. I don't know how to speak Chinese. I'm trying to think if you could actually just use the como, no sé cómo hablar chino. It sounds kind of strange to me. No sé hablar chino, directamente. So that's a bunch of uh, examples of no sé. What if we said ella no sabe or él no sabe? Sabe is a regular form. The only irregular with the verb saber is the first person. So ella no sabe hacer una tortilla de patatas. That is, she does not know how to make a Spanish omelet, a potato omelet. Ella no sabe hacer una tortilla de patatas. Notice, once again, I left out the como. It's kind of understood here. We're talking about the ability. Final example today, Pedro no sabe dónde está María. Pedro does not know where María is. Pedro no sabe dónde está María. So that's... Um, you know, a lot of examples of the verb saber. I could talk about the difference between saber and conocer, which both translate as no. Basically, the difference is saber with a fact. Conocer is more like to be familiar with. I learned this all in high school also, so I don't really know if there's a longer story. That's how I think about it now. And so another day I'll do a, uh, a full explanation of saber and conocer. I could also talk about, in another video, of course, the many forms of saber. That's, of course, a longer topic because there's lots of conjugations in Spanish. Thanks for watching the video. Like I said, you can like and subscribe to the channel here. This is Learn Spanish with Daniel. I've also got a lot of other stuff. If you go to expatmadrid.com, that's my blog where I talk about life in Spain. I've also got a podcast right here on YouTube, actually, and everywhere else you might want to listen to podcasts. That's called Spain to Go. You can donate to the cause, expatmadrid.com slash donate. I just make free stuff. I don't have anything to sell you at this point. I might eventually develop something to sell if, if people want to buy my you know, Spanish course or whatever. But for now, I'm just doing this for free because I like it. So I hope you have a great day wherever you are in the world. Leave me a comment, like, and subscribe. Have fun. Hasta la próxima. Bye.